Hello and welcome to the Old Man Orange Podcast. I'm Spencer Scott Holmes. And I'm Rand Dunnigan. And today, well, I, I wouldn't say we're doing something different, but we're doing something we haven't done in a while. Uh, every so often we like to do a retrospect, whether it be a video game, movie, or comic. But this one, like one time we did a whole retrospect on an anime series, Cowboy Bebop. We did the whole my- thing. We did every episode and the fucking movie. That was like, it took like a month to get to. And out of that, it was like, I think that was a good episode, and I really enjoyed it. But at the same time, it was just like, Jesus, that was a lot. So for a while, we've been putting off doing any series, like full-length series, you know. So, but then Evangelion. Well, I was going to say, this, it, this is the kind of funny thing. Like, if you were, like, in high school, you would be like, oh, shit, yeah, we'll watch all of, like, you know, an anime series in, like, one weekend. Because you remember doing, like, those marathons where, like, you and a buddy be like, dude, we're going to go through Street Fighter V, or we're going to go through, like, you know, Cowboy Bebop, or whatever the hell else we had on DVD. And you would just literally just lounge around on the couch for, like, two and a half days straight just fucking watching an anime series. Like, every single episode. I mean, from, like, morning till night. <laughs> Which, I always think, those are those moments that, like, you don't think much of as, a, like, a kid, but you got to think your parents walk in like, shit, they're still fucking in there watching cartoons. <laughs> When I was your age, I was doing a fuck ton more than watching cartoons. I'll tell you that right now. <laughs> yeah, in fucking 17, I wasn't sitting around with my best friend fucking in the dark watching fucking some Japanimation bullshit. I already had a job, got back from the quarry, and killed a man on my way home during the war. Exactly. You know what? And the factory took me in because they accepted people like me. People that sat around watching Speed Racer and bullshit didn't get, a- get along in life. I don't care how fast he is. Speed ain't fast enough to get away from me. I found <laughs> but, that boy. But Chased I just, him back to his own land. Oh, yeah, exactly. But I just remember just watching just like... like Because like, the thing was, is in the olden days, when you got like the very few anime sets that they had like complete on DVD, it was like a cherished relic. It was like finding something in an Indiana Jones temple. Because you... You were lucky enough just to have maybe one of those VHS tapes that has like two or three episodes, but to have the full set of something was like, oh my gosh, that you would hold it up and be like, come over, friends, we will come to my house, and from Friday till Sunday night, we will cherish the whole complete collection, unabridged, director's cut, the way that God intended. And if it was your house and someone got bored, your room is essentially Ozzy Mandis' room from Watchmen. So there's like 10 other TVs to play like a Wii or play Sega Saturn or some shit. So like when someone's like, okay, I can hear it in the background. I'm just going to play like, you know, Sewer Sharks for a minute. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, because that's like sort of how it was too. It was like, I mean, most of the time, I, I remember times where you would just, everybody would just sit there and just be like lounged out like on the couch. Not Cisco. Like if, it was, if, Cisco, if it was something Cisco, I know we're going like deep cuts for <laughs> old listeners, but if it was Cisco... Cisco Pizza would, Boys for new listeners, I guess, if you read Pizza Boys. Yeah, if it was Cisco and it was something he gave zero fucks about, like, oh, it's okay, okay guys, we're gonna go here and play like Aladdin on Genesis or something. Yeah, exactly, and that, that was okay, because it's like, whatever, we're doing our thing. But I just remember just going through, like, some shows just, like, as I said, Street Fighter V. I remember getting Van Dread. Like, I bought that off, like, eBay. Like, I don't know if it was real or somebody put it together, but it's a nice set anyways. And it was just like, fucking marathon it. Fuck you, stars. I can watch it on my own time. <laughs> well, I remember you saying all that, having, like, the complete set. It depresses me because I did. And it, I got it at the time. It was really hard to get. And it was expensive. Because this is the time, because when Evangelion first came out, which is the thing we're talking about today, Evangelion was this thing that, okay, so everybody has that friend. Back Now now it's not so hard, but back in like the late, like mid to late 90s, if you got into anime, you got into it probably from a friend, maybe you stumbled upon like late night stars or sci-fi channel late at night. But I had this one friend who was kind of that bad influence, but he was a good guy mostly. But he'd show you like Ninja Scrolls. He was like 15 and he's showing like a 10 year old Ninja Scrolls. Like, you want to see something fucked up? You know? And uh, I remember the part where the one, I'll just say this about Ninja Scrolls. I remember the, uh, we were watching it one time and this one friend of mine who was totally innocent. There's a part where the one guy's giving his meeting and he's totally do- banging that one chick doggy style. And he's like, <laughs> is he giving her a massage? 
<laughs> just at that time period. It's like, yeah, that's what he's up to. Yeah, yeah, sure, go ahead. And anyway, he's the one that introduced me to Evangelion. And ironically enough, he had like some VHSs of it, because this is back when you'd buy like a VHS and have two or three episodes on there. You'd just be so grateful. <laughs> it would take forever for the next VHS or DVD to come out. And of all places, it was actually playing subtitled on PBS late on Sundays. Really? Because I was I was wondering about this. This show is one of those ones that, like, technically this is the first time I've ever watched the original series. The only thing I ever saw was at your house back in the day. We watched, like, those, like, the secondary movies that came out. They kind of remind me, of, the best way I can describe it is there was Helsing, the original series, and then they decided to make, like, the sort of, like, standalone movie versions of it. They were, like, based off the comic mm -hmm. more. I know this one's a little bit different because this one's sort of, like, anime first, and then the seems like the manga was just made to, like, help boost the anime before it came out. But um, A good way to think of the, the secondary movies rebuild is, and this is actually kind of all spinoffs of Evangelion, it's kind of good to think of it as, like, J.J. Abrams' Star Trek, in a way. Yeah. And not saying which one's better or which one's worse. It just, that's kind of the way it sort of is because they have little hints that... It's kind of a cycle thing. Like this, it's it's like more of just a continuous cycle. But we'll go into that later. Um, and ironically enough, I remember the first rebuild movie. I remember that was one of those days where you'd really pay attention to what movies were being released on what day. And went went to go get Br Bruno, J.J. from Star Trek, and Evangelion. That was an expensive day. <laughs> yeah, there we go. There's there's that kind of stuff. But um, as I was saying, is like or going back to like the fact that it played on PBS because this was one of these shows that like this is something like Evangelion was one of those things that like you would see like in a Viz Comics or something like that. But like I never like it never appeared on like Cartoon Network or maybe if it did, it didn't appear at least in the '90s. I don't remember. Um, it didn't appear like I didn't see anything. So it's interesting that it came on PBS. You know what I mean? Because maybe that was like PBS was trying the. I think everybody kind of wanted to throw on this one hour block of anime and just say, let's see what fucking happens. You well, know it was I mean? PBS Sailor, late at night in Sailor Oakland. Sailor Moon was popular. Let's see if we can find another one of those. Well, it wasn't like it was smack dab between like Arthur and Wishbone, but it was like <laughs> uh, it was on it was like on Sunday nights. It was late, and they did that whole thing like, oh, so you like these Japanese cartoons, huh? Well, why don't we like money? Uh, too bad we don't see a lot of it around here. And if you want to see more of the show, well, maybe you should pull out your fucking wallet, you cheap fucks. Yeah, and they would like, do. It was kind of. It was, go ahead. Just one of those ones, you know, for for a hundred dollars, hundred dollars, you're gonna get yourself this lovely two VHS set of Evangelion. Believe me, you're not gonna get this anywhere else. This is gonna be great. It's gonna have some extra special features in it. You're gonna love it. Friends are gonna come on over there and be like, "Oh my gosh, look at this." He's got the two special edition, PBS limited edition Evangelion ones. They're going to think the best of you because they're going to know you donated to PBS because you like to support public television. Now, let's up, oh, Lister, oh, we, got, we got some callers on the air right now. I, I hear them coming in. <laughs> like, that's what, that's what they're going to be going through. And then there's their, I, I want to say one of the gifts was actually like a nerve bag. The company Nerve that makes uh -huh. the Evangelions. I want to say one was just like a standard kind of like bag but it had the nerve emblem on it I'm like that's kind of cool well see that, 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 that stuff like that in the now. 90s was so amazing to have because you didn't just get cool like movie and you know tv merchandise just anywhere you know what i mean i just think of it like you know i mentioned it before i don't know if, i think i said missed on our podcast i know i mentioned it on wes's podcast because i like to share that like i have those air force one like tote bags and i was like where the fuck else would you get that but other than getting the pay-per-view of air force one <laughs> You know, back in the '90s, or you think they got you got the, like the gift shop of the White House? <laughs> oh yeah, there, there's that Air Force One bag you get too. But this one is no, no, no. This is the Harrison Ford Air Force One bag. You can tell by the font. <laughs> you can tell by the font exactly, and you know, and I use that to carry my Game Boys in, so it all works out. Um, now <laughs> I still wish I would have got the Devil's Advocate one because I remember that was the other one that like. It was another pay per view where we were supposed to get like a you know an Air Force One bag and a Devil's Advocate bag, and they sent me two Air Force One bags. And at the time, I was like, you know what, I like Air Force One more, so that's cool. But almost in hindsight, like nowadays, I'm like, you know what, the Devil's Advocate bag would be so fucking random. <laughs> or a Devil's Advocate like Daily Planner or something like that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That that would be. I think that's cool. more fitting. But uh, that reminds me of, like, the PBS thing is just, like, kind of getting that cool merchandise. Because that's just interesting. Because, yeah, because I always wondered where, like, someone other than catching it on VHS would have caught Evangelion back in the day. 
And keep in mind, this is when it was subtitled. So I remember watching like the first, you know, it was weird because you got what you could find. And he had like the first like two, three VHSs. And then he had like a handful. He was keeping up with PBS and he started recording them. So I started watching the PBS. <laughs> like, Sorry. I just love like he, for PBS. Well, I just love like he was like he was keeping up with PBS because that's like where the parents are, like up. Oh, Look at little Billy. He's watching PBS. Ah, oh, he's gonna grow up to be going good. He's keeping up with the PBS. Look at him. He's even calling to donate his allowance. That's amazing. <laughs> Not oh, knowing what he's really fucking that. watching no and what he's really going after. <laughs> he's watching teenagers cry and fucking try and have teenage angst while they fight in robots. Which, <laughs> in all honesty, sounds like I'm kicking the show in the dick and. In hindsight, going back to this show for a minute, it's not... We'll go into it more in a chronological order in a minute. When the show first came out, it was something that I loved. And not when it first came out. I mean, it came out in, like, 95. But when it, when it first came over here... America! It, when it matters! It. And it, it was... <laughs> it was, like, one of those things, like... It just, you know, it was I didn't see anything like it, and I was... I liked giant robot stuff, but it wasn't my favorite genre. At the same time, it was like... Oh my god, there's all this religious stuff, and I'm not a religious person, but they're fighting God. God's the bad guy. That is fucked up and crazy. And, you know, and then, what, and, you know, just something that stood out that I never saw before. And, you know, that's also at that age when you're kind of, you know, starting to go through teenage ink stuff. So it's like, Shinji's kind of a bitch, but some things I kind of get. And then as time goes on, though, I remember I kind of fell into that phase where. I only like, like, five anime, because most anime is, like, for kids. You know, <laughs> and I'm an adult. <laughs> what? It's like, and I'm an adult, so I'm gonna go watch my Batman instead. <laughs> well, it was kind of that period where I was, you know, not gonna lie, when I got to Sonora, I kind of fell under some peer pressure, and you're... I was hanging out with a bunch of fucking rednecks, and there was like that, oh, I can't let them know. They'll, they'll judge me. Mm -hmm. And then as time went on, like, ah, oh, fuck these guys. And I kind of came back to eight. This is like the first time I've watched the series in years. And you, I was going to say, you said it was hard to have the whole collection. I did have the whole collection and I regret it because I let someone borrow it and I never got it back. And now ADV, the company that dubbed it and put all those, those DVDs out there, it is out of print. And it's super fucking expensive. Yes. And I had the whole fucking thing. So I am... So now it's this is now what we're watching on Netflix. If you do watch the dub, you're watching an entirely different dub. You know, and this is the thing, because I'll say this, like as someone who like this is like my fresh new experience to Evangelion as far as this like version goes. And it's one of those ones where it's like I always kind of wanted to get into it. But you know how it is. There's, there's so many shows, so little time and so on. Even as a kid, you know, there's still not even enough time. And plus, back in those days, too, it's just you kind of got whatever you got. You did. You know what I mean? Like whatever decision you made at fucking Suncoast, you stuck with. <laughs> you fucking yeah. tripled well, down on that. Sometimes you. <laughs> so well, uh... you know, here's the thing about Suncoast, and I know we said this before, but we don't have a lot of buying options where we were back in Sonora. So we'd go to Suncoast in Modesto or Fye or something, and that's like okay, we're here to buy westerns, anime, and kung fu movies, and sometimes you would you know anime was the harder one because it was always more expensive and it was always a roll of the dice western had a big like you know it's like okay i know this western or that western or this is a collection so these are gonna be good kung fu you might spend like 10 bucks or like 20 bucks on like a 12 pack and maybe like eight of those movies would be okay and then like the remaining though would be really good so yeah well, Kung Fu, you never really lose out on because you don't really... There's, like, the, the buy-in price is so low that it doesn't really make a yeah. difference. Like, the worst Kung Fu movie you bought, you're like, fuck it, I paid a dollar. Exactly. And the whole thing with with uh, anime was sometimes you just tough it out because, you're like, okay, I got this trip. This is... I have no idea what I'm buying here. And then you'd buy some anime series that had some really, really weird, like, anime shit in it. Like, the kind of shit that, like... Like, uh... Oh, like, I, I, I don't know, like, something like Soul Taker. Like, oh, the sister that he was trying to save this whole time? Turns out she wants to fuck him. So, it would come at you in some weird way like that, and you'd be like, oh, okay, that was different, but I'm already this many episodes in, so let's see where this goes. Yeah, exactly, you get that kind of stuff. But, um, 
but kind of going in this new version of Neon Genesis, like where they got the new dub, and I know people have been kind of bitching about it, but I think it's like, no matter what in life, it's like if you change any voice acting at some point in time, people are going to throw a hissy fit. You know what I mean? It's it's just bound to happen. And I mean, like, granted, this one's like one of those logical ones because it's like the ADV dub or whatever, like, it's kind of like in a limbo state right now, so it's not any like anybody really owns it or anything like that who's able to use it. So it's kind of like the only way to get Evangelion back out there was just to redub it. But what I'll say about this dub is like just watching it, it makes me feel like this was a dub from like 1997. Like it does not feel like this came out like right now. I I don't it does to me it doesn't come across as being new whatsoever. No, the dub. I'll say this: the ADV dub compared to the netflix dub it's one of those things where i mean i'll be honest some episodes i've been watching dubbed some i've been watching like in japanese because i kind of grew up watching it dubbed so i'm gonna go watch in japanese for the while so maybe every few episodes i'll switch back to subtitles um but adv not every character but a lot of the characters are pretty good i don't remember the the kid's name but the really nerdy kid who's really into military shit his voice his voice talked kind of like this and like the old ADV dub and that was a little jarring but then you get this one his voice doesn't sound as bad but a lot of other I don't know it's not that people don't sound as good all the time it's more of like some of the writing is a little clunky like here's an example the world the, the, you know they, they have like the first child the second child the third child and we'll go more into the story in a second folks for people who have not seen the show or don't know about the show but you know they got the the direct translation from Japanese is first children, second children, I guess, because that there's it's one of those weird words. It's kind of hard to translate exactly from child to children. So out of that, they say, you're the first children. I'm like, that's not how grammar works in English. <laughs> so it just sounds kind of awkward in this when they're saying you're the third children. I'm like, no, no, you're the third child. That just it just sounds the ADV dub was smart about fixing that. Huh, interesting. As I said, like, there's none of the stuff I've really, like, noticed. But granted, I'm, I don't have, like, the... I, I I mean, I can see, like, if you do have... It's almost like if they change Cowboy Bebop, you know what I mean? Like, because to me, that one's, like, so iconic. So, I mean, I can kind of get it. And I know for some people, like, you know, this one, too, is just as iconic, having those voices and everything like that. But going into it, like, it's to me, it's like... I'm, like, I'm totally fine with all these voices. You know what I mean? Like... It, there's nobody that really annoys me or anything like that. It's all pretty darn smooth. And as I said, like, it feels old. It doesn't feel new. Because that was my kind of, like, I, first, that's what I thought. Is I thought, like, oh, they're going to make it feel super new and make it, you know, change everything around. Because that's why I almost thought, like, why people were hating against it. It's like, well, maybe they came in and they started cutting it up and stuff like that. But, um, no, I, I, I really dig it. It's one of those shows where it's like, I almost kind of wished... I watched it in the 90s because I know that, like, if I would have watched this in the 90s, it would have had, like, that, like, you know, humongous impact on me as a child. would be like, it's the most amazing thing ever. You know what I mean? Like, how some of those shows were, how, like, you would almost, like, carry the sword for Japan because of, like, how, like, into this thing you were. But um, at the same time, catching it now in 2019... It gives me, like, a time-traveling experience of, like, what it was like to find, like, an amazing anime in the 90s. And that almost is worth it in itself. Yeah, because a lot of modern anime doesn't jump out to me. Granted, a lot of the stuff they show us and offer us on, like, a lot of these streaming services is more shonen, teen stuff, like Bleach, and even though that one's kind of older by this point. Or My Hero Academia, where it's like, I'm looking, like, I started watching that show, Gangstas, and... I really like what I've seen so far. I'm not that far into it, but I really dig that. And this one, he, the thing about Evangelion, it's just so weird because it originally started off as a show on a kid's time block. Been like, you know what? Even though we're kind of loose here in Japan, we should probably put this on a later block, not for kids, if we're just being 100% honest with ourselves. And then. You see, you haven't seen it yet, but you'll see End of Evangelion. We do our second part, and you'll be like, oh, fuck. This was on a kid's block at some point? Jesus Christ. Well, because really, because this part, like, here, like, like it, it does have that shonen feel to it. Because, I mean, really, like, the way I always say, like, an anime, how you can judge, like, who it's target audience for, is you take the main character or main characters, and you go, whatever age that kid is, that's pretty much it. So this one, to me, is, like, I call it, like, the teenage anime. You know what I mean? You sort of have, I mean, I know animes call them different ways, but there's, like, 
there's pretty much the kids anime, the teenage boy, the teenage girl, and then there's the adult. I mean, and so on. There's more categories than that. But for the most part, I feel like as far as it comes to America, that, that's the four we get. We get kids, teenagers, and then adult anime and so on. And this one, you can tell is a teenage. But there's really like, I don't know, maybe as I get older too, sometimes there's that thing where it's like, you know what? Maybe I, maybe I do want to go back to fucking school. You know what? Fuck it. I'm going to throw on, you know, like... Any of these kind of shows, like Rama One Half or something like that. I don't give a fuck. I'm going back, to, going back in time. I'll just avoid hot water. Yeah, shit. So they grow a pair of tits. Yeah, I don't know. At the same time as an adult, that doesn't sound so bad either. Shit. So how's the other side live? Let's find out. <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean. Like I, I don't know what it is. It's like one well, of those ones. Like it may be like age twenty three. That would be the time. Like no man, I'm gonna be a fucking adult, man. I I need a show where like I, I need something where like the guy's like seventy seven in it or something like that and he's still <laughs> kicking ass and nowadays it's like I'm just so open to like anything it's like fuck it let's go back to being twelve years old again and fucking piloting Gundams you know what <laughs> I remember those days well there's some of those shows that even though they might be aimed at kids they're still they're just good shows they're just well written mm -hmm. and you know you reach that teenage point where you're just trying to be really angsty and try and prove how like grown up you are which always makes you look it always shows your age and a lot of the more teen angsty shit like it wasn't like my favorite movie but remember i really liked the movie underworld now it's like i can't take that movie seriously not that it's a bad movie or anything it's just it's just such a product of its time and it stands out it's just so emo-ish to some degree and mm -hmm. this yeah this to some degree is emo-ish but at the same time this has something that a lot of animes don't have, and they have a lot of those quiet, subtle moments. Now, part of that reason is because they had a low-as-fuck budget, and they kept on getting cut, But so they would have to use a lot of these long, lingering shots. But they would use these long, lingering shots on moments that mattered. Mm-hmm. And it, and it works in that way, because here's the thing, it's like, when, the, when there is animation, though, the animation's so beautiful in it. And I think this is the thing that always has kind of lost me, sort of, in you know, modern animes is, I don't know what it is, and I mean, it's weird, I can watch like a Batman movie, I know it's like, Bat he's, he's fucking Batman, that's why you can watch a Batman movie, but like, it's like, sometimes it's weird, it's like, I don't know, like, I just miss good old-fashioned hand-drawn animation, it just looks so much prettier than any, I mean, if it's a comedy, whatever, you can get by with, I think, like, super computer looking stuff, but like, I think that's what always makes me more happy and why I love 70s to, like, 90s anime is just because the hand-drawn animation is so beautiful and that this show just delivers. Like, even if it's like might have, like, maybe some limited animation moments, like, when it doesn't have those limited moments, like, it's fluid. The, you know, the cell shading looks amazing. Like, dude, it is so dialed in. Whenever the Avas move or jump around or fight an angel. Mm-hmm. Exactly, it looks so good. I mean, then the other thing this one kind of this sounds kind of weird, but the other kind of anime this sort of reminds me of that, like, I don't know, you might not think this, but like, I feel like would make like a good pairing with it is the original Tenchi Muyo. I don't know why, it kind of has like that kind of feel. Like, you got this guy here, and he's surrounded by all these like chicks. It's got, I mean, that's kind of it's kind of a classic Japanese plot, you know. And it's like it's a different storyline, but it's like almost like here's a sort of sci-fi fantasy one, kind of with this, where this guy has all these alien chicks surrounded by him. You know, and then here's this one where this boy's, like, thrown in with, like, he's like, my father kind of brought me in, though he doesn't really seem to love me, but, uh, I have to go live at this, like, older chick's house, and then, like, his, I love how his buddies always show up, they're like, dude, that older chick you live with is so hot, gotta come on over, <laughs> which, <laughs> all... which totally reminds me of, like, just, like, you know, well, speaking of Cisco, really, it's like, that's how it was back then, because his sister was, like, the one that, like, all the guys <laughs> from school were like, dude, we gotta go over to your house, Cisco. And they just wanted to go over just to, like, creep on, like, <laughs> like his sister. And I remember one time, just, like, talking, somebody mentioned, they're like, well, maybe if I laid silently in the sauna, <laughs> she wouldn't notice. <laughs> I just imagine, just like, because a lot of times whenever somebody's, like, sneaking around a corner in an anime, it's that very limited, like, budget, like, slide where they just, like, you know? I'm just imagining Cisco's sister's room and just, like, fucking Kyle just, in that same, you know, maybe he has, like, a sweat drop and, like, some of that fucking blush they always have, like... His eyes have less detail. He's like, hey, hey, hey. like a nosebleed or some bullshit. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Because it, it is that thing where, like, like I don't know. It's like, when I think back on it, it's like, dude, that is, is like, that's the one thing I just love about kind of animes is I feel like, and I think that's really what almost, like, sold animes to me over as a kid, like, over almost, like, cartoons, is that, like, 
not saying that like American cartoons, I like I love those just as much too, but like in a different way, is that like American cartoons kind of have the feeling like this is made by adults, kind of going like this is what kids should be into. Our kids are fucking stupid. They can watch this. Where anime always felt like we a hundred percent understand what our age range is and what like you know in a, in a sense like what a teenager is like. I felt like they kind of get that, and they can get that as like an adult. They can get that as a ten year old boy. Like it's like it's kind of like example like Pokemon. Like Pokemon like captures what a 10 year old boy wants more than anything else in life that i don't feel like an american cartoon back in the day could have ever got you know because you know think about like american cartoons they always put like they always have like some older guy in there and like you know what i mean like they didn't put like the things that like a boy would really be like dude this is the most amazing thing ever they put put almost like you know as a man i would love to have a robot to turn to a car it was like you know a classic car you know something that you could drive up to the bar (laughs) and impress your friends with (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> you know, and that's sort of like always how show it is. Show them down at the Elks Lodge. Or, you know, you know, what about a show where it's a bunch of guys who are like, you know, a bunch of older gentlemen mercenaries who go around fighting Cobra, Commander, and everything like that. You know, that, that that's my kind of show where it's like, sometimes like the anime is just like really get it to like what it's like. And it's almost like when I watch Neon Genesis Evangelion and I look at like these kind of characters here and stuff like that. And you can just kind of go like, dude, I know that person. I know that person. I can remember somebody like that back in the day. And it's just like, it takes you almost back in like a time traveling feel. And that in itself is just so neat. Doesn't, well, we'll go into more details and specifics in a second, but doesn't Toji remind you of Josh? Yes. Yes. He definitely has that feel. (laughs) There's, There's totally that. I mean, I know that's like, you know, Pizza Boys, that's the best way I could reference any of these people. Pizza Boys comics, everyone. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so I'm kind of curious to hear your... I mean, I could, clearly I see you're digging it. I was going into this kind of not sure how you'd feel. And part of me's wondering, because right now they have the Rebuild series. The fourth one's coming out next year, apparently. And it got put on hold because they're taking their time making it. And then, uh, how, do, uh, how do you go... Um, Hari Ano, or Ano Hiraki, how do you pronounce his name? I forgot how he, which order it goes in. He was working on Shin Godzilla. And then he says, later Evangelion, I'm going to go make Shin Godzilla, because Godzilla is one of my favorite things of all time. So I went over and did that. Now he's come back to this, apparently, while also trying to work on the next Shin Godzilla. So um, I'm kind of wondering what they're going to do. I I'm, I'm feel like the... Like, because they're making a big deal, they have Evangelion. They're making a really big deal. Like, Evangelion is here! It's back! So I'm wondering, is there... Are they trying to get the live-action movie going again? Is something happening with somebody? Or are they testing the waters? Did Netflix say, you know what? Anime shit's selling right now. Let's bring in... Eight, let's bring on Neon Genesis Evangelion. Try to make that. And see... Test the waters. and might make a live-action version like Cowboy Bebop. You know, I, I could see something like that because the thing is about Neon Genesis Evangelion is that's one of those shows that I think anybody who knows anime knows of it, but I wouldn't say it's like at all like in maybe the top 10 of like kind of like the classic series animes. And I don't I'd mean say that like, it was. Well, I'd I, say it's top 10 of classic anime. Well, I'll say this. No, no, let me rephrase that. It, it, it is like it's probably like the like it's quality, but I don't think it's, it's as far as like everybody knowing about it. I will say there's a lot more other animes that probably outweigh it just because of popularity's sake because that's the thing about this one is i think because it wasn't on like cartoon network or at least if it was on cartoon was was it when was it It on on, it was on it was on adult swim and like i i don't remember if it was like college or high school for me but i didn't watch it so so it was it was way later it was on it was way later then so yeah so it wasn't on back in the 90s and you know early 2000s then so okay that, that's what I meant by that. Because I saw something that said it was on Adult Swim. I'm like, well, when the fuck was that on Adult Swim? Because I'm like, I'm like I would have known about that if it was like in like the, you know, the, you know, the initial years of like 97 to like, you know, 2007 of like hardcore anime, like searching on TV. So it came mm-hmm. on later. That makes more sense. Almost. Yeah. But um, it's almost like, as I said, not, not saying like the quality wise, but I feel like when people sort of think anime, you know, the first things that kind of come to mind is, of course, Dragon Ball Z. I think that is the number one anime ever made out there. You know what I mean? That, that's reached so many more people than anybody else. Look at I me. Mean, the shit, they keep making fucking video games like every year for it. You know, you know, big ones like that. Of course, Pokemon's another one that's always going to be a huge one. Sailor Moon, too, for being kind of the first resurgence of anime like back in America. I think people kind of always forget that, but, like, that really was, like, I mean, you had, like, the ones in the 80s that kind of hid, but Sailor Moon was the first one, and, like, 
once that sort of came, then it kind of allowed, like, Dragon Ball Z and Pokemon and everything like that. But I always feel like Evangelion was kind of like the hidden gem of them all. You know, that was the one that, like, you had to seek out. You had to get those VHS copies or something like that, or you had to watch PBS, apparently. You know, it's to find it. So it wasn't, I mean, granted that everybody gets fucking PBS, but at the same time, I don't feel like people were scanning PBS as much as they were scanning, like, stars and sci-fi and, like, Cartoon Network and so on. So yeah, it's, so well, it's one of those on ones, of like, it's more like a hidden gem show from the past that had, like, almost like a cult following. I feel like that's the best way to kind of say about it. You know what I mean? Because I will even say things that seem to, like, you know, it's, it's not like, like a Naruto. It's not like, you know, a One Piece that, like, just have these, like, massive, massive, doesn't matter what Comic-Con you go to, it's just, like, you can't escape that kind of stuff. No matter, probably, in, like, Bleach and all that stuff, like, no matter how old that gets, that's kind of going to be, like, a Dragon Ball Z where it's just always going to be there. Well, it's one of those things where, how do I put it? I think that one of the things that stopped it from coming to more stuff in America is all the Christianity shit in this. Mm -hmm. I think that's the big thing. Because right now, we're at the first half of the series. And if you look and you dig, you can find some stuff. But a lot more of it comes in later. And... Even then, it's still stuff you kind of got to dig and poke around at, and there's certain things you got to connect. I'm not going to lie. There was this period where I was really looking deep into the lore and trying to make connections and figure things out. Because by the time you get to the end of this, there is a lot of questions left unanswered, but it kind of throws the puzzle pieces out there and says, figure it out. And then they have these other spinoff series, which also offer other clues and hints. So out of that... Evangelion was one of those things, it was like probably, I probably liked it the most my freshman year of high school when I was first moving to Sonora. And I remember just, it was just this thing that just like, I remember seeing it like anything else. And you said earlier, it reminds you of something kind of like Tenchi Muyo. I kind of see what you mean, but the thing about Tenchi Muyo is, I don't know if I was the first, I don't think it was the first one to do it, but there was this, I want to say that's a genre called, or a subgenre called harem, where it's like one guy with all these girls just fondling and just tripping over themselves over this one guy. He's like, I don't know what the fuck to do. <laughs> and out of that, out of that, I think it sets itself up for that. But at the same time, when you this thing ends, it doesn't end with Shinji marrying one of the girls. And so it's, I think it also sets up expectation. Like, okay, guys, we're in for a robot mech anime with some teenage ink stuff going on and we're going to pepper in a little bit of Stanley Kubrick psychological stuff, a little bit of psychological horror. And then, but and then you'll, you'll catch you off guard. And then when you get to the end though, it totally changes. It becomes something entirely different. Well, and that kind of makes sense because, you know, we're only going 13 episodes in for this first part of the podcast. And I will say it's one of those shows where it's like, I'm loving it. I'm digging it. But it's really like one of those ones, and I can probably assume that it comes later on. It's like, I still don't really know a whole lot what the hell is going on. It's just more like, hey, there's these kids. And, you know, it's it's one of those weird things that only a 12-year-old can pilot this. You know, it's just like, they, they got the minds that are easily to be molded and so on. Shit, I don't know. Shit, I don't know. It's, it's, it's a boy. Put, put him in there. Get the two little <laughs> girls. Put him in there. Like, you know, I mean, maybe they're expendable. I don't know what the fuck, you know? <laughs> So it's like, that's like why we Feed got... Feed cigarettes. They'll be more docile. <laughs> yeah, exactly. We'll keep them... <laughs> and, I, keep and, them I, and I know, and I always feel like that's also... That also goes back to like, sort of like that kind of anime manga style being like... Because, you know, here's the thing. Is if you're fucking 12 years old, you know, you're sitting around being like, dude, if, could you imagine if I was fucking Shinji and I could fucking pilot one of these Avas? You know, it'd be so fucking sick, dude. You know, it's, it's the same thing as like a kid in America being like, dude, if I fucking have my own fucking X-Wing, guess what? I'd fly that to school. And you'd be like, you're a fucking idiot. Why would you, if you had your own X-Wing, you'd, I'd fly the fuck out of here. Well, you fly to school just to show off and then take you fly off. to school, you, stay. you come on by, you do a flyby, you shoot some fucking missiles at the people you hated and then take on off because you're going to space. <laughs> fuck them. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like the same thing. It's like if I had an Ava, dude, I'd show up and I'd fucking kick that bully like right in the fucking nuts with it. You kick the bully in the nuts with it? Why don't you take the fucking sword out? No, I'm just going to kick him. See what fucking happens. Get that weird vibrating blade thing. Yeah. yeah. Get the fucking, like, the shank knife. <laughs> a shiv. I just like to see him, like, go up to an angel, get in the headlock, just go... <laughs> like, shh, shh, shh. <laughs> like, I just form, like, prison shank. Exactly. 
But I think what this show does too is it does kind of start, it kind of leads you in a certain direction because it does that thing where it's like, oh, it's like Shinji surrounded by like all these chicks, but it like really it's like he has no care about it. It's not like the ones where he's like, where he's always confused and falling. Well, I mean, he does fall in some awkward places, you know. I guess that's just bound to happen. It's, a, it's an anime at some point. Literally right onto a girl's tit, but it's almost, it's not treated as like a boner tastic. Like, oh, it's treated more as a, um, um, Fuck. Uh. Uh. Okay. You know. Yeah. Cause, cause you know if it, if here's the thing if it was Shinji's fucking friends from school then it would be that moment. <laughs> but since it's just Shinji, cause he is kind of that guy. Like at first you kind of look at this kid and you're like, who the fuck is this kid? Like of course then he's like that's the kid who gets to fucking fly the suits. This little bitch kid like walking around and so on. But as he goes on, you, he kind of like overcomes it. And I think it kind of has a good like arcing thing where it's like he starts off as like the little bitch that nobody likes. But, um, like, literally little bitch almost from, like, fucking basketball. And then as it keeps going, it's, like, more and more, it's like, oh, okay, Shinji's manning up. You know what I mean? Now, now he's kind of cool to hang out with. You, you know, he's not bothering me as much. I mean, he definitely is like, I don't know. I don't have feelings. I don't think about stuff. My dad never talks to me. One time he said I did a good job. I don't know what that really means, but, but I'm going to keep going on because who knows? You know, I, I don't know how to accept this. And they, they put him at the house of, like, the, you know, the 30-year-old lady who's, like, every, I just love all the kids from school, like, dude, we gotta show up, do it. Dude, you got that hot 30-year-old at your house. You know, he's just like, oh, well, she's she's really just a slob and an alcoholic, you know. He's like, dude, really? Like, well, what, what happens when she drinks and slobs around? Like, can I come over? I got my video camera. I was gonna say, yeah, there's the one kid with the camera. There's even the part when Asuka he comes to school and they're, like, fucking creeping on her from a distance, like, taking pictures and selling them to people. Yeah, I Good know. luck doing that shit now. <laughs> yeah, that's what I mean. Like, they, they literally are, like, fucking spying on them, fucking through, like, the woman's locker room and everything like that. Like, <laughs> well, that, that's something you could do pre-internet, I guess. And they're selling Polaroids, which makes it extra creepy. Yeah, exactly. Somehow just buying Polaroids is just, I don't know what it is. That's just, that's just like, I don't know. And I like how they actually, uh, Sokka, they don't even introduce her to like seven episodes in or something like that. Because I just remember, yeah, I was like, think... where's that chick that was on Ryan's poster? <laughs> like, I don't see her in this show at all. All right, to be fair, it's not, she wasn't the only one on the poster. Just be like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Did he have like a fucking, like there's just a hole in it or something? No. <laughs> it's like a 12 year old on a post. It's like a, it's like a, it's like a, it's a, what was a, this, this probably was not helping. It was a wall scroll that probably tells you what age it was also. It was a wall scroll and it had like all of them on there. It was like Shinji, Ray, Asuka, Toji, and then it had like the Evangelion. It was, it was the cover of Death and Rebirth, which is the first of the, it's a collage movie, which I think we'll skip because it just condenses the whole series into a little collage. Mm-hmm. Well, as, as I said, I was like, I was just thinking, like, because that poster was like my, like, <laughs> that was like my knowledge base of Evangelion was that wall scroll you had, which I think everybody had at least some wall scroll. Shit, I got a Final Fantasy t- uh, X-2 wall scroll right here next to me. <laughs> but, um... It is one of those ones where it's like, I was, I was thinking, like, where the hell is that character at? Like, they haven't even, like, mentioned, shown anything. And then it's like, all of a sudden, it kind of comes in. I'm like, well, that's kind of cool, because this is, like, almost like a main character, but they don't even bring it in for a while. And I like how, like, she, I mean, she's kind of, like, the character that, like, kind of would almost, like, piss you off. But at the same time, you still think, it's, you know, it's like, you know what? still kind of cool at the same time, even though she just is loudmouthed and thinks she knows it all. But, like, and, you know, she's German, but she fucking hates Japanese people. Oh, uh, she's like half German, half Japanese. Oh, is that what she... Well, I always thought she was like full German because she's always like, what the fuck's wrong with you Japanese people? Fucking sliding doors? Where's the fucking privacy? Sleeping on the ground? You know what she's I mean? Like half, she's like half... She was like half so she's Japanese. Like, what's her half, name? She's like Hitomi from De- yeah, Dead or Alive? In, she was like... Ra- she's Japanese but raised in Germany. So what, what you're saying is one of those Toho Nazis... The axes of evil create <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's the worst thing. You, that, that's the worst thing you could have against an American. Is half German, half Japanese. Shit. What else they get put in there? Like quarter Satan. <laughs> Don't let her get in that robot. <laughs> she starts marching west. It's all over. Get the guns out. <laughs> but um, but yeah, it's like that. And then they got um. Oh, what was the other chick? The Raya. Ray. Ray Ayanami. Ray Ayanami. Ray Ray Ayanami. Ray Ayanomics. No, Ray Ayanami. Yeah, Ayanami. She, well, yeah, she's got that long fucking name. But I like, and I like that character too because she's like, I mean, she's definitely like that quiet type or whatever. She almost feels like an android. 
I, I don't know if that, I don't know if that, like, I kind of been wondering this the whole time. Is she supposed to be like something like that? I'm not too sure. I mean, like it hasn't mentioned not, that yet. Not an Android, but she's something different. You'll see as time goes on. Yeah. I was like, I was like, cause she's too like to herself and intelligent, but I like how she's like calm and collective and she always can get the job done where she, ha she doesn't express with emotions. We're like, Shinji's kind of always got yeah. like the, I don't know emotions. Like what will happen? My dad's watching. It'll be just like that. It'll be just like the, the baseball game all over again. <laughs> he just, he just like, what if he just like struck out at like if when he was four years old? This is like my family is there is no there are no losers in my family. Leave Shinji. It, it, he just it, has him like one of those just anime that shots shot with like his hands over his mouth, <laughs> like just like plodding, like like almost like um. Mr. Burns kind of like, because they always show him like that, just like sitting there in a dark corner. <laughs> Gendo. And he's got that massive office. He has a tree of life or whatever on the floor, but this massive office. Like, you know, man, I get it. You need some room to think, but there's a lot of fucking room in here and there's a lot of desks and I, there's, there's only a little bit of a desk and I don't see a computer. So I know you're not playing any computer games. What do you, what do you do? I don't, I don't see any drawers either. Is this just your thinking box? I don't know, or thinking like stadium? Because I don't know what the fuck is. What, what what's the deal with this fucking room? Exactly, you know what I mean. And then it's like you got Asuka or whatever, and she's kind of has like the like Asuka. I know it all or Asuka. Yeah, it's I meant Asuka, whatever. Asuka, and she's like I know everything. I can do everything right. I'm the best that there is. The best there was. The best there ever will be. And then she's the one that's always like fucking up, and then being like, well, you 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 know. She, she always tries to, like, fucking backpedal out of it, too. <laughs> she, well, like... Asuka's, like, interesting because she, she by all accounts, should be very hated. But since she is, like, the one really assertive character and one character with, like, unflinching, unflinching, like, uh, um, op not optimism, but um, confidence, there's kind of something out of that. Even though it's a lot of false confidence, it's kind of like, okay, let's see. She says she knows what she's doing, so let's see what happens. But out of that, I don't know. It's one of those things, like, I don't want to go too deep into it because I don't want to go into too many spoilers for you because I know you've, you've only got the episode 13 by this point. Mm -hmm. But um, each of the four main characters, Shinji, Rei, Asuka, and Masato, the, the, the lady Shinji lives with, all represent some form of depression. Because while working on this series, something happened. There is that train attack by that one, uh, that train attack that happened in like 95 or 96, where I think fifth, where I think maybe 15 people died, where he threw sarin gas in there, and it was by some crazy death cult guy. That had a big effect on Japan right there, and apparently the ending, I, I'm curious to know what it was, they said, uh, that's kind of akin to sort of what happens, or maybe they're just like, oh, I don't know, maybe now's all the time to put this kind of ending. And then on top of that, you also had um, Hideo he, he Anno going through a depression and being just like, what is life? You know, all that. And so really, that's one of the reasons why we're about to hit the point where the series changes. And out of that, he looked deeper into each character. And each of those four characters represents some form of depression or some type of depression. And I'm kind of curious, I, I was, for a minute, like I said, it sounds like at the beginning you didn't like Shinji and you go on to like him more. Um, I want to say the reason why I was always kind of okay with Shinji is usually I feel like a lot of the teen angst shit in anime, it's there because it's there. And Evangelion kind of made a lot of it popular. So that's why you see a lot of the quiet, otherworldly girl who's always kind of there, but's good at everything. And you have the, oh, I don't know! Not, not, it wasn't always Shinji, but a lot of that came from Shinji. Because, you know, most popular anime in Japan for a while. And out of that, since this one was not made the first, but the first to do it really well, I guess, Shinji comes across as... Cause sometimes you see the teen angst shit, like, you're just being a teenager, grow the fuck up, get over it. But they really kind of make Shinji... I think ice skating uphill to some extent. Like he's this character who was abandoned by his dad at a young age, never really had any human connection. And so I kind of get why it's suddenly this idea of, Oh, you're a kid. You're going to fly, drive a robot. It's where everyone else would love it. But it's just like, you pick the one person who's just like, wait, what me? 
Yeah, and I, and I, I mean, I, I get that totally. That's like one of those ones, like, it's like, the thing is, like, it's that kind of, like, you're thrown into a job that, like, almost anybody else would think it's the greatest thing ever, but what if you threw the guy who didn't really want to do that? Who really just wanted to sit in a corner and just do his own thing and not really be bothered? So there is always that kind of interesting thing. Because, for example, it's like, here's the thing. You throw his friend with the fucking glasses and the camera, that kid would have been, like, fucking jizzing all over that robot because that was, like, his number one thing he wanted to do. His sync rate is up to 400%. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Like, that guy would be super into that robot. But maybe that's not the best choice, you know, to have pilot one of these things, you know? And it, and I just feel like, so far in the show, it doesn't really explain, like, how that, like, synchronization sort of works with it. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I feel like that's probably going to come up a little bit more. Like, it's kind of like, it's there. It's like, there's a lot of things that's kind of like, you just It does, kinda... and it doesn't. I'll tell you that. It does, and it doesn't. Now, I'm going to tell you something right now that isn't really a spoiler, because they never really say it flat out but more or less this is what it is the avas are man-made angels that's what those are mm -hmm. so underneath all those robotics even though you saw probably a little bit of skin and all that they're basically man-made angels and they have to sync with that but then more to why these kids can sync with these robots comes in later hmm interesting and even that sync part though it's like that like when, when you see this i go more than anything, I feel for, like, Pacific Rim, I feel like, okay, as much as that's, like, easy to say it's Gundam and Godzilla, I feel like I see almost more Neon Genesis in that than anything else by now. Because there's the whole thing we really have to merge sync together and sync up with it. That one, because you needed two pilots for that one. But at the same time, I mean, I, I even say this. There is, like, the first Pacific Rim, which I liked that one. Second one was just kind of, like, whatever to me. But the, the first one, mm -hmm. that one... The only thing I really have problems with that movie is it focuses so much on the main robot and the douchebag rival robot a little bit more. You have all these other robots that are there, and there's the one robot that's very slender, that's piloted by the Jet 2, by the, the four Japanese dudes or whatever. I can't help but feel like that was supposed to be a nod to like each robot was a particular genre. And even though mech itself is a genre, they're subgenres, I feel like those guys are supposed to represent like Evangelion or like this alternative version of mechs. Yeah, exactly. Because that's how I felt like that was going too. And even like, not even just like, like mechs and anime, but even like, because there's like the Soviet ones too, or the Russian people in there too. That kind of like 1950s. Yeah, and it's got like, it's like old timing and everything. Because like, that's the thing about that, like Pacific Rim 1, that's one of those movies that like, I have it on Blu-ray. It's like, the, the, every time I watch it, it's one of those movies that just kind of gets better and better and better like each consecutive watch it's just like dude i almost think it's like a close to like a perfect movie i mean like i know some people think it's got a little bit of cheese in there but i'm like dude that cheese just makes it super fun if anything but uh but like it's like i just think about like i'm like neon genesis i'm like i'm like i see where there's like a huge probably inspiration just from this into that movie and so on yeah and i definitely see that and one point in time i want to say they're kind of teasing maybe Guillermo del Toro was doing the live action movie for a minute. And maybe since that fell through, he's like, fuck it, I'm going to make my own robot thing. See, and that's the one too is like, dude, if you could give like Neon Genesis it, and or Gundam as well too, if you could give them the budget of Pacific Rim, because I think that's what made Pacific Rim so awesome, is it's like it had the budget to make it look super sick. The movie's filled with action just like the whole way through. There's not like slow parts in it. And it doesn't even have, like, that kind of Godzilla problem that they have with the last two American ones where, like, they're, they're they're both good movies, but they do do the thing where it's like, let's focus on the humans. Like, get the fuck. Nobody gives a fuck about these humans. You know well, what I mean? He, well, here's we, we all know what we're here for. We're, we're here for fucking robots fighting fucking monsters or monsters fighting fucking monsters. I don't, I'm not here for no fucking, like, bitches crying in Hawaii shit. Bitches crying in Hawaii. Godzilla, king of the monsters. <laughs> yeah. Well, guys, I guess that's the first one. The Godzilla King of the Monsters has, like, somebody be like, oh, my mother, blah, 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 she's evil. Be I didn't see the second one. The first one I really like. I want to see the second one. The second the one. I mean, the second one's, like, the first one's one of those movies where it's, like, out of an hour and a half or whatever it is, there's, like, 20 minutes. It's, like, pure amazing. And the rest of it, you're kind of just waiting for that pure amazing part. But, like... The second one's got more amazingness in it, but it still does have, like, that's the only downfall to it. It's not as good as, like, maybe the King Kong movie was or something, but it's still, like, whenever fucking there is something cool, though, it is cool. Like, they don't fucking disappoint I there. just want to, I just want to watch explosion fucking. I just want to see, yeah, I just want to see, yeah, I just want to see fucking Godzilla fucking with subtitles, 
fighting fucking other monsters. You know what I mean? Fuck, we don't need to see any humans whatsoever. Just Godzilla, Mothra, Ghidorah, Mechagodzilla. I don't give a fuck. All those characters. There's enough Godzilla people that we can have a Godzilla fucking sitcom and have no humans whatsoever. I'm sorry, I'm dropping this fucking stupid lunch pail. How many people say that in the podcast? Sorry, I jumped this lunch pail. <laughs> well, I had my feet on. I was like trying. I was like using it as like a stool, and then it fucking slid over. I was like, I'm like trying to get this back, but um, but no, uh, but, like back me on Genesis. So uh, something about this is about Evangelion is it does start off kind of a little bit more of like okay, this is kind of boy and robot we're gonna throw a few little curveballs at you they bring in the aspect okay what if you have someone who is not just like he's not that he's just a little bitch he is on the spectrum depressed you know he clearly he's like chemically off so you got that he, he he's bring... what they would refer to in 2005 as emo <laughs> he Definitely. really is you know what i mean like he's totally that key i mean he literally is fucking listening to like a proto like fucking ipod in bed just being like uh just laying here. Why bother? They want me to fly a machine, but that's not what I want to be. But but then you my, bring my an dad aspect. was the company. <laughs> <laughs> but it's like that's the thing. They don't play the shitty thing like, Dad, I want the robot. But um, the whole thing with that though is, they come on the aspect of like, okay, they have because you know there's the whole uh, how do you do it. There's the whole thing about when somebody gets in a robot and they suddenly like, he's a natural. How'd you do it? Oh, I don't know. I just blanked out in this. He blanks out, and that happens, but later there's a little bit more of explanation, kinda, they give. It's more of like, they throw the pieces out there, and they let you figure it out. But the other thing about that is, they, like I said, they have more of those quiet moments. Like, there's that moment where he breaks his arm. And yeah, they do have a little bit of the, you know, forced uh, exposition and narrative stuff that they gotta give in, like, a lot of anime. But they has a lot more quieter moments. Like, there's that scene where he's looking at his arm, like, just traumatized, and it's in one piece again. And he's just looking at it, like, what the fuck? And there's a lot of quiet moments like that, where somebody is just by themselves, and nothing is being said, but you're able to piece together, like, okay, yeah, you can kind of just know what they're thinking. Yeah, yeah, you, you can kind of get it across. And that's what I kind of like, is there's nothing really, like, kind of, like, fed to you in this one it just sort of happens and it kind of drifts along and it just kind of feeds like this definitely reminds me of one of those shows that like is so made to be like you watch it sort of over and over you have those fucking like marathon parties in like 1999 where like you just watch through it like on a weekend and then like three months later you do that again and you just each time you kind of take it in you learn something new i mean cowboy bebop was like that too you know i feel like mm -hmm. each time i watch cowboy bebop i learn something new in it I think Cowboy Bebop has a lot more of those quiet moments because this does have a lot of those like wacky, silly moments earlier on in the series. Like when Asuka first comes in and the the gust of wind comes up and they see up her skirt and she smacks all the, all the guys there and then Toji's like, oh yeah, well how about this? And he just like flashes her his shit and then just walks right <laughs> past him. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, because it has, like, those moments there, too, which those are also the ones, too, remind me, like, this is probably the reason why it wasn't initially on Cartoon Network. Yeah, it's kind of hard to get away with that being on, like, next on Toonami. Like, a old Toonami, not new Toonami, where it's on Adult Swim, basically. But another thing I like about the action, because, you know, earlier I said, like, I just want to watch robots fighting robots or monsters or monsters fighting monsters, whatever. I think they do a good job of making every battle different from one another and it's not simply just stab this robot or this monster in the face and each one is really different and it's just interesting in that aspect because even though it's a lot of it's pseudoscience bullshit there's the episode where Asuka's introduced and they're jumping from aircraft carrier to aircraft carrier to figure out how to stop this like like aquatic angel and it becomes this okay. Well, how many cord? How much? How much of? How much cords do? How much cord do we have? Before for the, for the umbilical cable goes up. Right, we're going to try and reel this thing in, and you kind of hear them strategize and actually come up with this plan, even though it probably wouldn't work in real life. A lot of that's just kind of the interesting like puzzle solving thing at, about it, rather than just being an okay. They're going to fight till one of them dies. It's like no, you actually kind of see how they get there, and that's also a reason why you see Masato is there or why Ritsko is there. Well, and even, too, the cool thing is, is each angel that they battle is completely different from the last. Like, I think just that in itself is a very cool strategy to go about, 
is that because that really makes you go like I have no idea what these things are because every single one of them doesn't even look the same as the next one. Like they, each one is different. They all come in. There's one lava. There's one like in the ocean. There's ones just like walking around that kind of look kind of humanoid ish. But then there's they're, each one so completely different. And they create different battles in every single one. And they kind of almost save it, too. Because a lot of times there's, like, the action almost doesn't happen in this show until, like, the last, like, five minutes. But that last five minutes is really badass. But it's not like that. there's a bunch of filler crap in it. No, no, It's like it all builds up nicely. And you kind of learn more about it. And so ends the characters and just having moments and so on. And then you get these action scenes. And then it's always just like, well, what's going to happen in this one? Like, how are they going to go about it this time? And I think just that in itself really leaves a lasting impression like it almost has like a metal gear solid boss battle feel to each battle they do they're not just any old robots punching each other in the face moments until that's it well it's even like how strategic they get with each battle like there's the one where there's the blackout and like okay how do we turn everything on when there is no power and oh yeah it's a giant robot how we doing this? And you even see Gendo Akari, who's the head of Nerve, like he, he himself, like bringing in rope and all that, trying to load like the plugs of the of the Ava of the Ava cockpit in there manually. And then the they like okay, well we only have five minutes to do this because we don't have the umbilical. Cable. That's another thing, the umbilical cable. Like that's one of those things. Like this thing is so fucking big, no way it's gonna last forever. It's gonna last five minutes tops. That's why we have this umbilical cable coming out the back of it. But they go, they're going in after that one angel that just drips acid. And like, okay, so one of us has to work as a shield. The other jumps down there, throws the rifle. The other catches the rifle, unloads on this thing. That is our one shot. And oh my god, it actually fucking worked, you know? Exactly. That, that, that boss right there reminded me of like, almost like Johnny Quest, like back in the day when they had like that... Oh, giant walking on. <laughs> <thing. laughs> yeah, when I saw that thing walking, I was like, dude, fucking Johnny Quest right there. <laughs> I didn't even think of that. That's a good point. They got a thing for eyeballs because they have the flying. They have the one falling from the sky. They got that thing, and then there's the part when Shinji first comes. Like, here's a good moment. Like another good little psychological horror moment. Like when before you even know what the Avas really are, there's that part where, you know, after he has his blackout and the first and the first Ava defeats the the first angel, he's sitting there and he just looks in the mirror or that he sees the reflection of the of the Ava because the part of the, the plating fell off the mask comes off and he sees there's like skin and then it has this eye comes out and the eye zooms in and focuses on him and then like that's kind of creepy right there mm -hmm. no, no no that is and that's pretty cool at the same time too yeah there, there's so many neat things in it and I think that's the thing about this show is it has like a lot of layers for it to really make it kind of stand out you know <laughs> I don't know, it's like, it's, it's so far, it's like, I love, I just kind of love how it's like one of those shows where it like, it sucks me in, yet at the same time, I feel like I still don't know a whole lot about what the hell's really going on, but I'm like, I'm here for the ride. Take me with well, you. When we get to the, when we, when we get done with, um, their last half of the series, as well as the movie, believe me, there's going to be some questions. I can't answer them all because I only... There's stuff I just found out today, actually, before we did this podcast. Like, oh, I didn't fucking know that. Like, uh, for instance, I was reading the manga along with this. Because this is when I was just, you grab whatever anime or thing you could find. And the manga actually was this, uh, it, it seemed kind of like, all right, it runs parallel to the show, but some things happen a little differently. Most of the same, but kind of differently. Turns out, right when I stopped reading the manga, because I was like, all right, well, it's kind of going the same way. That's where it changes. And it goes off into this different direction, which also fills in. Like, apparently the manga just ended in 2013. And it apparently fills in some of the gaps and some of the answers, some of the questions for this series, as well as other versions of Evangelion, which kind of, it's this, to, to, bring, it, to bring it all together without spoiling it. Essentially, every version of Evangelion is considered to be some form of canon. It's just this kind of continuous loop. Another life cycle, essentially. Hmm, interesting. Like alternate dimension life cycles? Maybe that, or maybe it's kind of like, you know, they say, you know, there's those theories that when the universe ends, everything else repeats. Huh, that's interesting. Something kind of like that. So, and 
there's apparently things that happen at the very end of the comic that kind of put like a, oh, fuck, so that is this thing over here, you know? So is there, so there's quite a bit of the comics, is there? Is what you're saying? Yeah, and it makes me want to go out and read them, because I, I read them up to, like, volume five, and like I said, they Shit, were there's following there's 14 volumes of them. <laughs> yeah, I was following it pretty closely, and I was thinking, okay, eventually this thing is going to, it just seems to be following the, the series and kind of sl- changes sl- things slightly. Now I find out how it ends. I'm like, oh my god, that is entirely... Okay, I want to read the manga now because it sounds like it did something totally fucking different. See, and the nice thing, too, is that's one of those ones that, like, that manga is one of the few that, like, okay, it's only 14 volumes in. Like, you could easily go out and get those ones. It's not one of those ones where you're looking at, like, 60 fucking volumes. Jesus Christ, I don't have that kind of money. 800 volumes of Dragon Ball, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Well, it's just like you think about that. Like, if you went to buy that brand new, like, if you just went to buy, like, even just 60 volumes, that's, like, over $600. It's like, dude. Dude, I mean, like, I mean, that is, like, a big stack, but come on. I mean, like, it's like, oh, I mean, Grant, you might be able to find that on eBay and get, like, someone set for, like, you know, at least half that price. But um, it would be fun to kind of look for those Neon Genesis ones. I wonder if they even have a sale on Comixology. That'd be kind of neat if they did. I have, to, I have to look for that. Might might after all this Netflix stuff coming out. About that, it. That's what I mean. You never know. They might be on there. But um, well, it just seems so. I mean, it's it is a classic anime, so it makes sense. Like, guys, check this out. We got this classic show now on Netflix. Go tune it in. But at the same time, though, I feel like something's coming up with that because why else would they be? I feel like maybe they're at least testing the waters or something with it. I definitely think so too because as I said like when I mean like when I said it like as like top 10 I mean like top 10 like known animes because I think of like the biggest animes probably ever made like granted I'm not saying like by best animes but just those ones that like everybody sort of seems to know you know it's Dragon Ball Z Sailor Moon um you know Naruto Bleach One Piece um Pokemon of course uh Attack Cowboy Titan Ca- Cowboy Bebop uh, yeah Attack on Titan for like a new one I would definitely say I, I was thinking more kind of like you know, two thousands and back. I guess that go to was... Japan Town. You see that shit everywhere. That's true. Yeah, you see, yeah, Attack on Titan definitely is like the the real new one and so on. But um, you know, there in a, I would say Gundam. Of course, I don't know why I didn't think about that one. That one's always like the number one. But I think of sort of like our generation of anime, like that late nineties, you know, two thousands time period. I mean, I guess I guess by that standard, Neon Genesis probably would fall into like the ten because because <laughs> there's not that many out there in America. Yeah. <laughs> you didn't have a whole lot of choices back then. Shit, you had like one rack and like whatever you found on there for thirty bucks, that's what you kept. Well, something else that makes Evangelion really interesting is just the way how it's like. Okay, you could have a city where people just live, where monsters and robots fight and just crash into buildings all day. And they just go about their day. Or we could have a city that's prepared for this. So what happens? The buildings go down underground. We have actually, we actually see like machine, like cars and machines made for picking up these giant gun shells. Now at the end of the day, it makes more sense just to fucking leave that city. But at the same time though, I think that's an interesting thing to go about it. To see... Oh look, uh, we've we've adjusted to this world, and that was something I, I got a kind of a glimpse of in um, Pacific Rim. The idea that like, oh yeah, I'm a wall worker. I'm building this wall to keep the to keep the, the like kaiju out or whatever. So I yeah. think that some of that could be dropped pulled from Evangelion because most of the time, from what I've seen of Godzilla movies, it's usually like, where's this big monster coming from? I don't know. Looks like we got to just hope he doesn't kill us. Yeah, and that's what I kind of like, is everything kind of prepared. And and that's another thing, too, is they kind of talk about, like, there was this event that happened 15 years ago or something like that, and they just really haven't explained too much of it yet, which I think is kind of neat, too. It's just, like, some kind of catastrophe happened, and since then, we've had this fucking fucking angel problem ever since then that keeps reoccurring. Get these goddamn pesky angels out of here. Get these goddamn fucking angels out of here. Shit, every single time I try to go to get a sandwich, a fucking angel appears. And next thing you know, the buildings oh, collapse, and fuck, we gotta go on defense. We're now in Tokyo 3. Fuck Tokyo 1. Shit, nobody lives in Tokyo 2. It's all about Tokyo 3 now. Pricing has really gone up in Tokyo 2 since they put up those new condos. And still, you still get a good chance of a fucking angel landing on top of that fucking thing. So what's even the fucking point? Exactly. Well, I mean, like, there's, like, just, like, when you take all the characters, too, it's just, like, even the small nuances and stuff. 
where like uh like shinji's like really careful about like how he pilots his robot around buildings but um asuka like she just doesn't give a flying fuck what she runs into like she'll just like there's that one where there's like the aircraft carriers and she's fucking jumping off them like they're fucking sonk the hedgehog springs <laughs> like and Ray no, is very like <laughs> no remorse whatsoever for her actions it's like she almost just cares all about just being like as long as she wins at the end of the day, who cares who dies in between? It was worth it, yeah. <laughs> Shit, and they complained about Superman? What about that fucking episode? <laughs> oh, she was that Japanese-German girl. Couldn't let her in that red robot. God damn it, she's got, she's got Hitler blood in her. I just fucking know it. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's even that part where... Um, the way Ray fights, she's very articulate. She's very of kind of like, okay, I'm going to be very strategic. I'm not going to move around a lot. She usually seems to work as a sniper a lot of the time. Even though Shinji's the one firing the sniper rifle and she came in with the big shield, she seems to be, that's how she works most of the time. Mm-hmm. I, I just, I, I love how, it's just a small, there's so much like sneak small things in it. And I think that's really where like this show probably, like each time you watch it, it's just that one more magical like layer you can add to your story. I mean, like that—that's how it is with like any great movie, any great TV show, any great video game. It's like every time you go through it, there's just that like extra bit you get to it. But I can already see this stuff happening just right off the bat, and I think that's what sucks me in. I look really forward to getting to the next 13 episodes and then um, going to those movies. Now, those movies are they on Netflix or do we have to go fucking buy those ourselves? Like. Old school so style. here, here's the way it happens. Um, the original two movies are on Netflix. Now the original, the first one is Death and Rebirth. So I'm just trying to prepare you. This isn't me trying to spoil anything. This isn't trying me to lower your hopes. But when the series ended, first off, budgeting uh, caused them to um, budgeting caused them to end it like not the way they wanted to. Censorship was a thing as well as that attack that happened on the subways in Japan with the searing gas. Mm -hmm. So they had to do something very weird, and I'm not going to lie, it's going to leave you with more questions. But so what they did is like, okay, okay, okay. We got all your death threats. Someone went and spray-painted our animation office telling us to die, die, die. So clearly uh, there was some opinions. So what we're going to do is we're going to make two movies. One movie basically sums up the whole series for who anybody who has not seen it has a couple of little deleted scenes. Basically just a quick little cash trap. If you bought it on DVD, Death and Rebirth, that's what it's called, it kind of has the first 20 minutes of the new movie, End of Evangelion. So, that's what that was. So then you would later go get End of Evangelion when that came out, and that was the full movie, and that's like about an hour and a half or so. And that kind of... It's weird, because... How do I put it without spoiling anything? End of Evangelion, essentially... Because when you get to the end of the series, something happens, but they don't entirely show it. End of Evangelion shows what happens, but then it also throws something a little different at the end, too. Hmm. So it's also kind of like a what-if kind of thing that happens at the end, which also leads into the different cycle thing. So, and then out of that... Those are the two original movies. And then, like, okay, I guess we're done with Evangelion. And then he, Hideaki Anno, I think that's how you pronounce his name, or Hideo Anio, I'm butchering this guy's name. But anyway, um, he said, okay, I want to re-release the series, but I want to do it way differently. I'm going to release it in a four-part movie series. First one follows pretty close to the first six to seven episodes and just changes some things up, and it's almost kind of like a revitalized remastered kind of director's cut thing just condensing it and amping up the scale changing a few things around second one it's following things closely and then it kind of starts to change and become something different third one drastically different with a couple of the same changes fourth one's not out yet and that's the rebuild series I <laughs> like fourth one's not fucking out yet shut the fuck up i'm not telling you what it's about yeah, yeah. <laughs> fourth one's not out you could suck my fucking balls that's the director who said that not me yeah, that was in the report. Suck my fucking balls. <laughs> yeah, these I fucking Avangelion like, well, fans, they'll I fucking do it. There's some shit that happens in the... How do I put it? Um, I don't know how it's being treated critically in Japan, but I want to say the Rebuild series 
I want to say it's almost kind of like the new Star Wars in a way, where it's sort of like a statement on fandom and the series. It's like still the next chapter. It's still a movie. It still has a story. But the lair is almost speaking more on the fandom of it. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I can see that. How like Kylo Ren is like, burn it all. Start from something new. We got to build, you know, that, that kind of whole thing. How the new Star Wars movies was trying to make you presented things you knew but then used your knowledge of star wars against you and kind of threw some curveballs at you that's kind of what the second half of the new movie does as well as the whole third movie hmm well interesting i, I look probably after this i look forward to actually checking those ones out again and going from there but um but yeah no i i'm i'm really looking forward to you know, i mean i'm at least gonna watch one episode at night if anything but, um, yeah, working my way through this, because this really does... I don't know, it's like, this to me is almost like the perfect anime to, like, watch now. Because a lot of times now I'm looking for these shows. I'm looking for the ones that I sort of missed out on. And or some... There's some shows, too, where I'm like, I just want to watch again. It's like fucking Tenchi Muyo. Nobody fucking has Tenchi Muyo, the original series. I'm like, dude, I really want to watch this, because I watched The Living Daylights out of that as a kid. Shit, I played through the Super Nintendo game when it was only in Japanese, and I beat the game. I don't even know how that's possible now as an adult. But as a child, I put the time and effort into it. It was an RPG, for crying out loud. But, um... This is one of those ones where it's like, this one right here just takes me back. It's like... I know, It's like almost like... Even though I'm watching in 2019, it's like I feel like I'm back in 1999 each time I watch an episode. Yeah, and it's also I'm I'm not gonna lie. It went for me one of those things like I loved it to I liked it, but there's some meh things about it. And now I'm back to this point of like, you know what? No, I do like the show, and it's not a perfect show. And I think the end of it, it's kind of up its own ass a little bit. But at the same time, it's a good show, and it's definitely worth watching. That being said. Sure, shit, not worth, not for everybody. I know that much. That being said, though, it's definitely, you can't say you've seen an anime like it beforehand. Yeah, exactly. I, I feel like it's easily one of those ones that, like, I could say would be, would be literally in, like, the top 10 best series I've ever kind of seen, probably at the end of the day. I've only watched 13 episodes. I'm already kind of throwing it up there. Highballing it, you know, up there with my fucking Cowboy Bebop and Street Fighter V and, you know, all that good stuff. Well, but, I hope um, it stays up there, because shit's about to go south. I mean, just for the characters and other shit, but yeah. But yeah, I, I look forward to, we'll have our part two discussion, and really get to dive deep in the Neon Genesis, and go from there, and um, yeah, not, nothing but good times. But beyond that, though, go to oldmanorange.com, check out more podcasts, more cartoons, comic books like Pizza Boys, Pizza Boys with a Z, that's up there. For any of those characters that we mentioned throughout this, they were like, who the fuck is that? They can all be answered in Pizza Boys if you go to either Comic Central, Comixology, Amazon. Get yourself some comics. It's up all in there. But, um, but yeah, Neon Genesis Evangelion. Awesome stuff. It's on Netflix. We'll put a link if you decide to want to buy it on DVD or something like that. But uh, maybe the new ones, too. The, the rebat or the whatever. The, what are they called? The reboot? Rebuilds. Rebuilds. Rebuild. It had something in there for free. But um, till then, I'm Spencer Scott Holmes. And I'm Ryan Dunnigan. And we'll see you some other time. Later, folks. Thanks again for listening to the Old Man Orange podcast. Sure, check out oldmanorange.com for more podcasts, cartoons, music, animation, and a whole lot more. We also have the Old Man Orange blog going with all kinds of fun stuff. If you easily want to support the show, use one of our Amazon links either on the website or in the description of the podcast below. Rate, review, and subscribe to the show either on Podbean, iTunes, Spotify, YouTube, Newgrounds, or anywhere else that you seem to get this podcast from. Grab the sitcom-styled comic book Pizza Boys on either Comic Central, Comixology, or Amazon. Want more podcasts? Check out the Indie Comics Club over at Comic Central. I also got a workout website called Thor's Hidden Gym. Filled with fitness tips and tricks, videos, and a whole lot more fun stuff in the calisthenics world. Talk to us on Twitter, at Spencer S. Holmes and Dunnigan Ryan. Like our Facebook pages of Old Man Orange Productions and Pizza Boys Comic. Thanks again, we're out of here.